Hello YouTube and welcome to this channel. This tutorial is a continuation of the previous two tutorials regarding how to calculate the core loss of uh, three-phase transformers. Uh, in the previous tutorials, we learned how to design and how to excite and uh, do the boundary conditions for uh, this design. And now uh, we have the simulation results ready and want to basically see what we have and how we can validate it. First thing that you have to check is how good is your meshing is. So for example, what you can do is you can go and only click for example the the core and you can hold the, the control key and you can also click on the other three uh, coils and then you can right click say uh, I want to basically uh, plot the mesh on this and you can call it the transformer mesh and uh, you can now see uh, what the mesh operation looks like here Well, now, uh, one thing that you have to note is uh, because we are in the transient simulations, uh, it always starts at a very, very beginning, infinitely uh, uh, earliest time possible, which is the time equals minus one. You can either double click here or you go to the menu and find the time uh, step, uh, uh, the, the view context. So I'm just double clicking on the time and then select the first time that I want to actually start. Um, I have uh, the start time of, um, uh, so note that uh, we saved the fields from uh, this point, um, 0 0.0805, and because of that we always only have the file, the, the, the basically the, uh, the times, the fields for these times. Okay, so let's say whatever field, because it's, there's no moving option, doesn't matter which uh, time you're selecting for the mesh plot. So this is going to be our mesh plot, and as you can see, it is um, enough in detail. You can add, uh, if you see the details is not good, for example, if you have a feature and you think that the feature or surrounding around the feature you have to have more mesh uh, equations, then you can actually create uh, higher resolution mesh. So that is the mesh. Next thing is you want to check there is the, the setup. Uh, basically, uh, you go on the re results and go to the brow browse uh, solutions. Uh, we do have a solution for this peak, which is a good thing. Sometimes you just go and come back and you see there is uh, uh, there is no, uh, basically, uh, nothing has been solved and just, just crashed and you don't know about it. Um, also, when you right click on the results and go to the solution da data, you can see over here that there is a check mark next to the V peak of, of this V peak. Remember that this V peak was a variable when we defined that and that's why it looked at as a design variation. Um, again, you can see how much time it took to, to run the simulation and uh, because we haven't added any uh, matrices of force or torque, we don't have any information in these two uh, tabs. And the last tab basically shows the mesh quality and, uh, and everything else. Okay, uh, now let me uh, go one more back to uh, what we are going to see here. Um, at the moment I can uh, plot, for example, the current of the terminals. Um, so what you do is you right click on the results and go to the first one, create transient, uh, create the transient uh, rectangular plot and uh, you just select on this and over here on the windings you just uh, select on the currents that you want to see uh, you can hold your click and then just go down and select the three of those or uh, you can just hold the control key and select any of those that are not uh, adjacent um, you have the flux leakage and the inductances and the input voltage as well so maybe we can plot the input voltages later on so this is the current and uh, as you can see the current uh, uh, you know you can see that the current is keep increasing but uh, uh, which is okay and there's a three phase uh, we should see this the third phase actually yeah I think I when I was doing the excitation I put the second phase and the first phase lying on top of each other, which is not the case. Um, 
I think uh, I think I did like a, uh, I forgot to put like a exactly phase difference between the the current you can constant. You can clear that up later on. And um, also you can uh, let's see the plots and the from the plots of the uh, voltage. We can realize if we did a mistake or not. Uh, let's go to the voltages and uh, and plot the voltages. Oh. Huh. No, the voltages is correct. They're actually uh, 120 degrees uh, phase shift, and you can see that the voltages are like growing from uh, from zero to. Hi, um, this is a correction of uh, the the previous uh, tutorial, and I remember that uh, I couldn't find why the currents are matching the the B and C on top of each other, and the reason was you have to make sure that uh, the terminals are. Uh, the same side, or we have the same um, uh, rotation of the current uh, amongst all these three coils, and then we can have them the phase shift. So if you look at what we I've done so far, uh, when you go to the terminal A, you see that the terminal A is on the right side, for example, and it's showing uh, inward. And then when you look at the other terminals, they're on the left side and they are showing inward. So basically, the terminal A is not the same as the ter other terminals. There is actually 180 degrees phase difference. So to fix that, you either can uh, add a 180 degrees phase difference in the winding's uh, excitation current, or you can simply click on um, the terminal and swap the, the, the directions and here we can actually make it to be out of the terminal like this and this will uh, make sure that all the three uh, terminals are actually at the same directions and uh, now if you run the simulations and you will see uh, that uh, by the way when you are working with the uh, Maxwell 16 version 16 you can uh, uh, you can watch the currents live uh, as they go so this is actually pretty cool uh, uh, of that so uh, as you can see here you can see now that the, the two currents are actually getting different and uh, the three currents so they are all different phases and uh, as it goes, the simulations, I will show you at the end of the day the result of it. Uh, you should have to see something like that and as you can see that the current is in the range of an amp, not a thousand amp, uh, like what you saw before because of the right uh, uh, phase. So if you do this correction, you should be able to get the right result right away. I will uh, come back when the simulation is finished to show you the, the uh, end of the day current. Okay, now you can see that this is a simulated uh, current, and as you can see, this makes more sense. It's uh, um, and you can see there are three phases, and you have a sync of current for the very first phase. And uh, if you go basically the loss, if you want, again, it's a very simple thing. You just go and uh, select the loss from the loss part, and uh, you basically want to have uh, the core loss. Uh, which is right there, and uh, it's going to, this going to be your core loss. And if you want to have an average of the loss around here, for example, you can just right click on that and then say trace characteristics add, and then you can say I want to have a math, I want to have average, and it's not going to be a full average. It's going to be decided to be from, let's say, from, uh, let's say, from 80 to 100. So that would be from 80 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. And oh, forgot to say done. Actually, this is a bit dumb of these guys that I have to select the dumb, dumb part. Uh, okay, again, specified, and then you say this is actually a pretty cool trick. Um, that I'm showing you here because if you want to see just the average from some points this is pretty cool you just say specify and then specify your uh, boundaries that you want to average and then you press add and there we go you got your average 16.31 watt of uh, of core loss uh, that you have for this uh, for this transformer once again this core loss might be uh, if you go to the core loss again you see the same uh, core loss we don't have the average is not correct because uh, the average is from 80 to 100 as we defined but uh, you can see that the core loss amount is around 24 uh, k kilowatt thanks for watching
uh, for this transformer. Once again, this core loss might be way less than uh, what you expect in the when you do it in like actual uh, measurements. Um, the integrity of the measurements are always questionable when uh, your adapters and your like systems that you're doing the measurements has some losses itself. So you're basically want to make sure that you're not measuring the loss of the uh, measurements equipment system. But uh, but what you will realize at the end of the day is because the max hole is not actually uh, uh, simulating all the losses that can happen in the core of the transformer the core loss might not be exactly the way that you look at look at them here and uh, and therefore the measurements will give you a much higher um, core loss just to uh, mention a couple of those uh, uh, parts that Maxwell does not simulate um, you have to know that um, the mechanical stress on uh, laminations are not going to be simulated and therefore that uh, will uh, affect the core loss. The edge board losses, um, a step gap fringing flux, you, you, we, do not, we do not uh, simulate those so therefore uh, those losses associated with those cannot be added into the core loss. Uh, circulating currents definitely and then the variation in the sheet loss uh, values. These are like a bunch of things that uh, Maxwell does not simulate and therefore the core loss that you get at the end of the day is not the same as the core loss that you do the measurements but it's, it's close enough and it's good for you to practice uh, simulations before you do actual design of the transformers. We can also uh, take a look at the magnetic fields on the, the core of the transformer so what you do is just click, click select the core and then right click and go on the fields uh, magnetic uh, mag B and then magnitude of B and then you say plot on the surface only and uh, you can select all objects for that and uh, that should gives you the core uh, basically um, I have to actually rotate this because this is how it looks okay and uh, you can see that this is the distribution of the magnetic field on the surface of the core and once you uh, double click on the time uh, context you can actually change it to whatever time that you want and you can see the changes there uh, as you can see and one other thing that you can do is you can right click on um, basically the field B and start animating it uh, by just clicking on this and uh, animate that uh, animation is going to take all the frames, that's okay, you can uh, press ok, if you don't want all the frames you can go for the selected frames and uh, I will be back when the animation is finished. As you can see the animation is finished and you can uh, check out the uh, magnetic fields frame by frame and uh, that basically shows how the three phase is actually working. Pretty cool. Okay. So that would conclude uh, our um, uh, tutorials on the 3D dimensional um, uh, core loss calculations in transformers and uh, I hope that you learn uh, um, what you wanted to looking for and I, I show you a couple of tricks that you, you do and also those are important things to know. Um, um, I'm gonna go and have another uh, tutorial just uh, for the 2D version of the, the Transformers. Same thing, but the 2D one. And um, uh, you can actually uh, take a look at those uh, um, tutorial and basically measure the comparison between the results of the 3D and the 2D. And uh, if you have any questions, please uh, put it underneath the videos. And if you have any designs and you need uh, personal assistance, um, uh, you can send an email to my email address, and uh, I will, I, I to moderate those uh, requests, I have to uh, charge some uh, hourly rate. It's it's a, it's a very fair charge, but it's just to moderate the amount of uh, incoming uh, support that comes. So if you are okay with that, just send me an email. Um, and uh, we will uh, we will go forward from that point. Okay, have a great day and thanks for watching.